Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Kate Zeinard. I'm Meg Healy. And I'm Amanda Carestio. Today on the podcast, we're talking about sewing machines for new sewists, what we started out using, and what we think are the best features to look for. Then we'll talk with Regina Carlavaro with Janome about what to keep in mind when you're ready for an upgrade. But before we jump in, how's everybody doing today? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. I had yeah. a very busy How about weekend. You met? <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we hosted a, uh, a socially distanced, uh, small, small get together, just five people uh, for Father's Day. And so, you know, hosting is always kind of exhausting. But we were out oh, on the yeah. patio until the thunderstorm started. And then we had to kind of rearrange it quickly inside the house. But we all had our masks and and we stayed pretty far apart. And I think we're all safe and good. So, mm hmm. Nice. Yeah, I was I was able to actually go back home for the weekend. So I was I hadn't seen my, you know, my family in so long. So I was mm -hmm. able to yeah, to go home. Uh, it's finally okay to like do they call it here like double bubble. Like you can increase your bubble, they say. Yes. <laughs> uh, something like that. Yeah. So I just was just me went home for a bit. So I feel like I feel good. Uh but no, unfortunately no sewing, but quality time, family time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. We had some Father's Day celebrations as well. I was going to try to get some a last minute sew in um, to complete a present for Father's <laughs> Day and failed miserably. But I finished them up today, so I'm not not too far behind the the deadline. But um, <laughs> yeah, busy times. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I did do just a tiny bit. Um, I was kind of vaguely inspired, so I made for my in-laws some masks using um, artist themes fabric from uh, Robert Kaufman. So I made a Van Gogh, a Monet, and a Klimt mask um, for my Fun. for my in-laws, and they kind of appreciated it. I think so. I know that's like the new party favor. <laughs> it's a, it's a fabric yeah. mask. Yeah. <gasps> well, I was just, you know, this will take me an hour to do three of them. Yeah. They're pretty cool. Yeah. I'm actually mad at myself. I forgot to grab a picture before I gave them away. So um, I'll mm. just have to tell them to take mm -hmm. selfies and send them over for me. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I brought, I brought my, uh, my family, like a bag of like 10 masks. Cause, um, and for some family friends too, but I took such like a break. It was just so weird. Like sewing them again. <laughs> I had <laughs> yeah. them right before I left uh, last week. Yeah. But yeah, you, you should Definitely still wear them. <laughs> still wear them out oh, yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's it's good to – a lot of now my first rounds are coming back for second because you realize how much you wear it and it's and good to have like a rotation. Exactly. So I'm slowly starting to make uh, them again for some family and friends. I'm like, actually, I could benefit from like one or two more. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I made myself a new one a couple of weeks ago just so I had nice. an extra one around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. How about we Let's get started? It. Yeah. In our new coronavirus reality, many people are discovering sewing as an engaging and useful skill. I can only imagine how overwhelming the world of sewing machines must be to these new sewists. It's pretty intense for me, and I've been doing this for almost 20 years. We thought it would be helpful to go over some information about sewing machines and what to look for in a starting machine. So to start out, let's talk about our first machines. What were they? And briefly, what were their capabilities? Amanda, why don't you start us off? Sure. Um, I think really my first machine was probably my mom's. Um, it was a Singer 6105. And I will, I'll have to pull a photo of it. I was actually looking at it online this morning because um, I don't still, I don't have it anymore. Um, but it was, I think it was like a mid 80s singer it was metal and it didn't have a ton of functionalities i mean i think for the time it was probably pretty um, up there it had um, zigzag stitches it had um, like a stepped button holder but i never really mm -hmm. figured out how to use that um, but it and it was very it was very much mechanical um, manual tension all of that um, but of course, that's what I learned on. That's what I loved. 
and it was hard to uh, figure out a new machine after that and and give that one up um, because it was it was so lovely. Yes, I agree. Mine is very similar. Um, But let's ask Meg about hers first before I talk about mine. Um, I can't remember the model, but it was just one of those. It was um, it was a little brother. I think my mom got it at Walmart, so it was just one of those basic, um, like probably like the lowest, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> the lowest one. Um, but yeah, it was pretty basic. It it could do like it had other stitches, and I think it had a button uh, hole function. I could never manage to figure that out for that <laughs> machine though. But yeah, it was just kind of one of those uh, those really entry level kind of inexpensive ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wish I could remember though. I would, there, I, I would have no way of just figuring out <laughs> which model that is. But yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to know, yeah. especially when they're they um, mostly yeah. numbers. Um, uh-huh. I forgot to look mine up as well. Um, but it like Amanda's was a singer from the eighties. I think it's the style maker or style something. I will update that. Um, once I can pull out the, uh, um, instruction manual, which I will do, um, because it is here in my house right now. (laughs) Um, it's, it's a metal singer. Uh, it like Amanda said, it's got some zigzag stitches and mine actually has a few, uh, stretch stitches as well. It, it'll do a blind hem. It'll do a couple of stretch stitches. Um, I think I've got five sizes of zigzag, but it's a, it's like a, um, a rolling dial. So I can probably hit in between if I want to, um, Very, again, very mechanical. I do have a buttonhole feature on it, um, which I have actually done actually fairly recently. I'm not good at it and it never makes a very good buttonhole in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also have a buttonhole um, attachment that goes on it that I have never actually used. My mom picked it up for me and um, one of these days I'm going to try it out and I'm going to do it on video and it's going to be hilarious. But unless, in, in case you couldn't actually tell, it's still my primary machine. <laughs> my first machine <laughs> was the one I inherited from my mother. Um, I started using it when it was hers, and she upgraded when I was in college and gave me her old machine. Oh, and nice. And while there are other machines in this house, um, the Singer's still kind of my go-to. It's um, it's a workhorse. Uh, it's very... It's very sturdy and it has a beautiful sewing machine table that goes with it. So it's very easy for me to work with it. I don't have to pull it out or deal with, you know, I've, I've got my nice surface and all of that sort of stuff. So, um, so what did you guys really love about your early machines and what features were missing that you wish that it had? I mean, mine's pretty easy, an automatic buttonhole. Yeah, I would love for to have sure. an automatic buttonhole. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the machine I used had any stretch stitches. Mm. Um, so I don't I don't even know. I think it probably was a while before I realized that was missing because I didn't, you know, mm-hmm. realize I needed it. Um, but I did love that machine. And even just talking about it, I'm getting like, oh, it was such a good machine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I love that it was like mechanical. I swear that yeah. thing would like stitch through anything I put in front of it. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, I upgraded machines and I get um, my machine gets a little fussy if I've got a bunch of layers under it, if I'm making yeah. bags. But my singer, it would just go through anything. And I think part of that was because it was like the metal frame. It was just, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. I was actually, I was looking it up and it, um, this particular model, I don't think it was officially classified as a heavy duty machine, but I did see it somewhere listed as that, um, because it really was. And I, I, I didn't upgrade for a really long time. And I feel like I got really creative with workarounds. Like I didn't, I really wanted to get a machine where you could drop the feed dogs and do some like free motion quilting. And mm-hmm. this machine did not have that capability. So I would just not um, I wouldn't drop the presser foot and I would, and I had a, dar- I got a darning foot for it and I would do free motion quilting on it. And it would do just what I needed. You know, I, I didn't have all the bells and whistles, but I kind of figured out 
a workaround. And um, it was, I don't know. I, I loved that about it. Nice. Yeah. I think, well, when I was first starting out sewing my first machine, the the best feature is that it sewed, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it, just, yeah it worked. It didn't yeah, keep you from yeah, sewing. <laughs> exactly. It worked. I don't think I really played around. Like, I I just didn't. It was so, like, I was young and it was, I was so new mm-hmm. to it. I didn't know what the other possible. So I was like, this is just the best thing ever. I didn't <laughs> feel like I was missing anything because I didn't right. know anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, until I went, yeah, I did upgrade my um uh, for, I remember for Christmas one year, I got a brand new sewing machine, and uh, and then I would just realize how it's like smooth. I think the little like yeah, this the power when you realize mm-hmm. a better machine actually can you know um, it just like sews a lot better and yeah through more layers and stuff. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. So um, I'd like to go through some of the features that you can look for in a first machine and talk about what we think are kind of the best things to look for. And the first thing I have on my list is mechanical versus computerized. And this might get, this might be a little um, controversial, honestly. Um, For me, I'm just going to throw my own answer in there first. For me, it's kind of like um, learning to drive a car. If you learn to drive a stick shift, you can get into basically any car and drive it. But if you learn on an automatic, Mm. then you will not be able to get into a car with a stick shift and drive it. And I feel like it's not it's not precisely the same thing, but I feel like starting off on a mechanical machine, at least when you're learning, is really helpful in the same way, because if you know how to work a mechanical machine, you can basically work anything eventually. Yeah. <laughs> um, whereas with the computerized stuff, you might not know how to put the foot down if you don't have a button to do it. Um, though, of yeah. course, I have on, on occasion had trouble putting the foot down when there wasn't a lever. So maybe I'm just crazy. But I personally think that you have more control over a mechanical machine. Um, and so I kind of I kind of lean that way myself. What do you guys think? I would probably agree. I mean, I think it also depends on the person. Like if you're someone who likes something that's like super user friendly and you can like, you know, just turn it on and push some buttons and get going and and that's going to lead to you having the best sewing experience, then I would say maybe computerized. Mm -hmm. And if you're someone who doesn't like things as user friendly and as spelled out for you, you kind of want to have that kind of background understanding and you're kind of more on that like do it yourself kind of end of the end of the spectrum that I think mechanical would probably be a better fit. I I agree that mechanical is probably easier, but I also started on a mechanical. And um so I think that that probably influences my thoughts <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> How about you, Meg? I mean honestly I really, really like a mechanical. Before I got, right now I have, uh, now I have one, like a a really fancy computerized one. (laughs) But I was using, uh, I have like several machines, but the one I was my favorite that I used the most was just, uh, it it was literally only did a straight stitch. It was like Mm -hmm. a brother project runway mechanical one. And it didn't have any other stitches, but it stitched really well and really fast. And I used that one for year, like that was like my one that was always set up that I used. Um, but then, yeah, I got the uh, Husqvarna designer Brilliance 80, and which is like connects to Wi Fi and all. And I do it like it is, it is nice, but uh, so I don't know. I do love them both, but I do, I think there's a little because it's just, e- yeah, it's sometimes buttons for adjusting tension and pressure. I, I like turning a knob for some yeah. reason instead of pushing mm-hmm. a button. I don't know. That's just, that's just me. I don't know. You know what it comes down for, t- comes down to for me in the end is with a mechanical machine, if you take your foot off the pedal, the needle stops moving. Whereas if you do that on a uh, computerized machine, the ma- needle usually keeps going until it's either all the way up or all the way down. And sometimes I don't want it to be all the way up or all the way down. I just want it to so stop true. exactly where it is. And that—that <laughs> yeah. that is my like, that's my like little thing. That's my pet peeve about working with computerized machines is when I have to, when I can't get the needle to just be where I want it to be. Um, and mm-hmm. you know, 
that's that's just a quirk of my own. But that is the kind of thing that you have to kind of think about when you're deciding how much can because I feel like I feel like you get more control um, over a mechanical machine yeah. because it does respond to it, it will only do things in response to your um, input. Yes. Whereas sometimes the computerized machines have settings that are preset and they do things that you don't necessarily want them to do because that's what their settings yeah. are. Um, so I feel like if you're kind of a control freak like me, when it comes to machines, mechanical is the way to go. But there are lovely, lovely things that computerized machines do that, um, that uh, mechanical machines just won't. And we mm-hmm. cannot let that we cannot lose sight of that, I suppose. Indeed. Yeah. 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 They, they are like really yeah helpful. Like the things that um, like mine, you can cl- like literally click which type of fabric you're using. Exactly. And, it automa- and like, mm-hmm. honestly, I think that really does help. Like where if I wasn't as experienced working with that fabric, I'd have to manually and tinker and like lots of right. swatching of before I start showing a project, like I need to get balanced the tensions and that was super annoying. But yeah, so that that's really great with computer, uh, computerized machines. Uh, True. Too. True. Mm-hmm. And um, one of my favorite things about my um, baby lock destiny, which is, primarily I use for embroidery, but I can use as a sewing machine is it's got a, a push button needle threader. I don't even have to mm-hmm. aim it. I just have to put it in a certain spot and hit a button and it threads that needle. And it is so delightful. <laughs> so see, there's I always like threading something. the needle. Yeah. I always, whenever there's an automatic, like I just never, I, I don't know. That's like part of my process. I always, whatever, if it has capabilities to do it myself, I always just, I always like to do that. I don't know. <laughs> well, and I don't I don't disagree except when I'm re- constantly changing uh, embroidery thread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, when sure. I'm, you know, it's when from I'm that. Changing, changing embroidery thread every 3 minutes, then yeah, I just I don't want to have to do it. I forgot but, about uh, that. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> So what do you guys think um, are some must-have features to look for in machines and also things to look out for? The one that kind of popped up in my mind was sometimes I've looked at some of the cheap, um, just like very low-level machines, and they don't have built-in lights. And that Mm. can be very difficult, especially when you go to like, say, thread the needle if you can't see Uh, very well. Um, that, that can be something that you have to make a decision whether you want that built in light or you want to, I don't know, glue a, a little lamp to the side of your machine or something. So, um, I would look out for that, but what else? You know, I think with this, the starting place is really thinking about what you're going to use the machine for, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I think in your must have list will probably depend some on that. I think if you're looking for, um, for garment sewing, then probably like the buttonhole feature yeah. is tops on my list um, because you don't want to get into a situation where you're avoiding sewing button up garments because you're afraid to do buttonholes on your machine. Um, I feel yes. personally or, attacked right now. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I mean, you just, you don't, you, if that's what you, if you know you're going to sew some button ups and that's like a goal of yours, mm-hmm. I just, I feel like. You should, you know, shoot for the the best machine you can get that has that feature. Um, and same with stretch stitches, because I feel like that, yeah, that's a pretty I, yeah. common thing nowadays, mm-hmm. um, just to make sure that that your machine has that. But I don't know. I think when I was when I was ready to upgrade, um, I really i I didn't get the machine that I wanted at the time because I was doing a lot more quilting and the machine that was a, the best machine I could get was not necessarily set up for it. It was, but it was much better for garment sewing, oh. which is what I ended up doing more of later. So I think <laughs> you it, do- um, you kind of have to like do your best job anticipating what you're going to like give yourself a little bit of room to grow. I think, mm-hmm. um, especially when you're thinking about must have features, like you might, it might not be something that you need now, but maybe, you know, right. A year or if, two down the road, you're going to, you're, you're going to want that feature. If you're going to invest in a sewing machine, which usually, you know, even at the lowest level is going to cost, right. you know, a, 
a nice chunk of change. You want to make sure you're not just getting the most basic possible thing and that you have what you'll need mm-hmm. to make it worthwhile for, you know, not just a few months, but a few years at least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think, Meg? What are your must-haves? Um, I don't know. It's hard to – I was thinking about this. and It's hard to uh, – like it's hard for me. Like I don't know to talk in terms of what must-haves for me or what I think would be a must-have for someone like starting – like getting, yeah, uh, more of getting the a sewing one. machine. Yeah. Like I think really looking at the the plate and the markings for ste- – making sure that there's at least some – not just one seam allowance mark, so you can do different mm-hmm. widths of things. I like light, lots of guidelines. I think that's a a good must have because it just really helps with it, especially a new sewer. Lots of visual that's a aids. Great point. And, I had never, I hadn't yeah. even thought about that. But yeah, oh, that no, is yeah. really important. Hmm. Because I could see, like, I think I was looking at some uh, yeah research and low level and like just even one mark or not even any really to for the edges to, for the seam allowance. So that was just kind of just to make the sewing go a little bit better, but yeah. Um, and then also a zigs, like some sort of, yes, yeah, stretch type stitch, yeah. I think would be definitely, definitely a must have. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a good idea to have a more, more traditional stretch stitch for sure. But if all yeah. you can do is a zigzag, uh, making sure that you can do at least a narrow and a wide zigzag exactly. I think is very important. I think it's very important to be able to easily change the needle because God yes. knows as a beginner sewist, you're going to change the needle a lot. And you're, um, if you can't do that easily, it's going to be a big, big pain. Um, yeah. and, and you want to be able to change the stitch length um, all of oh, those yeah. like very basic things, um, just to make sure that you don't, you don't get stuck. Like all I can do is sew a, a single straight seam. And that's, I mean, that is, that is great if you're a certain kind of sewer, but I think when you're just uh-huh. starting out, you need to have a little bit more flexibility than that. Um, yeah. and a light lights, lights are very good in my opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and with the zigzag too, um, to be able because probably you probably wouldn't start out having a serge or two, and that's really great for at least helping serge an edge, just zigzagging over the edge right. uh, of the fabric. So that could be so, right. So that's a I think yeah, some sort of zigzag stitch would be very must have. And I will say for other traps to look out for, I only thought of one other thing. Make sure that it has a foot pedal. Um, oh, I can't imagine yeah. that they would sell because a lot of a lot of computerized machines yeah. nowadays have start and s- stop buttons, and I can't imagine that oh. that they sell those with just start and stop buttons. But who knows? Maybe they do. Be, but um, it's so hard to control if you if your machine is just stitching forward without you being able to like ease off the speed or anything like that. That sounds awful to me. So, um, yeah, make sure you've got a foot pedal or a knee pedal or whatever it is that you want to use, but something that responds to pressure, not just on off. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah. When you said that, I was thinking about like variable speeds for sure. I think yes. oh, yeah. it's going to be important. Like if there's only, if you've only got options for, going really slow or really fast, I feel like you're going to not have a very fun time. Right. Cause yeah. very, once you've got, once you've got a feel for it, very slow is way tedious, but it's way too very slow. fast yeah. might not be good enough for you. Yeah. And, and also make sure that there's like a, at least a couple other, like some sort of zipper foot. I think that would be another yes, uh, oh, yeah. good must have to just at least a couple feet included. So it's not just mm-hmm. that one because then you're, mm-hmm. you know, a zipper foot opens up a lot of, not just even for zippers, but for oh, uh, yeah. lots of yeah, different. Yeah, I use my zipper foot for a helpful. lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah so I think that's, that's definitely a must have. Yeah, definitely. Great point. Um, okay, so we've already kind of touched on this, but um, how many and what stitches do you think we really need? I mean, I think two, honestly. <laughs> Straight and zigzag. <laughs> Straight and zigzag. I never use any other stitch, except for like the buttonhole stitch, but those are the, right. I only use really. Straight and zigzag. 
Yeah. What do you think, Amanda? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's I think that's probably all you need to get started with. I yeah. I probably use maybe like probably mostly those two. I have um another kind of stretch stitch on my machine that I use pretty frequently. But I'd say I'm not a big stickler when it comes to lots of different yeah. kinds. Like I just I pretty much stick with the utility stitches on my mm-hmm. machine. Occasionally, if I'm making something for my daughter, I'll do something with a decorative thing. But yeah. I think that for a new sewist, that can be really um, distracting when you're buying a machine. You yes. know, you you can it's, get you, really wow. hung up on yeah. the number. Yeah. And this one I has 80, think, 80 stitches. That's got to be better than this one with 10 oh, stitches. But, right. you know, are you ever likely to use those 70 extra stitches? Uh, yeah. 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 Save those for... For your upgrade and yeah. and stick with utility stitches, but I I think yeah I think straight zigzag buttonhole mm-hmm. yeah and I'd say stretch is a good a good stitch to yeah. have and a blind hem stitch is really useful um, if you don't know what that looks like it's um, a few either straight or small zigzag stitches with a bigger zigzag in between um, and that that helps you make some really nice hems pretty easily. I always um, forget about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. always just tan sew it. Like, I always forget about a blind hem. Yes. <laughs> like a stitch. Um, I and so I think those are kind of the, the like, really go-to. And honestly, if you want some decorative stitches and there's a machine there with decorative stitches and they're really calling to you, I think it's fine. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. I think that you can get away with exactly two stitches, straight and zigzag. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. you know, m- my husband's uh, first machine has, I think, about 20 stitches, something like that. It's also mechanical. Um, and it's got a couple of different knobs that you turn to get different stitches. And uh, he actually uses the decorative stitches because he does his um, LARPing and and makes his uh, faux mm-hmm. medieval garb. And sometimes I've actually used some of his decorative stitches too, because I don't have any nice. decorative stitches on my, um, on my basic singer. So I think they're nice to have around. Um, I don't think you should expect to be using them daily. And you sh- if you're going to feel guilty about having them and not using them, then don't get one with decorative stitches because you will never use all of them. Um, but yeah, if you like them, I think you should get them. Yeah. yeah, I think I totally agree. I just think it shouldn't be like the sole thing that you base your decision on. No, and, yeah, absolutely not. You know, yeah. because I, I just I think that the vast majority of people have a ton they don't use. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that being said, my my uh, designer brilliance has a bunny ears a decorative stitch, and I. And, I mm-hmm. kind of got really excited when I just that's a must have right there. <laughs> so yeah. I know I need to incorporate that. I think it, I don't do enough things within yeah decorative stitches on uh, on garments. I think that I should try and incorporate that at least one project this year. That's that's a goal. Definitely oh. new uh, <laughs> new resolution for twenty twenty. Yes, <laughs> decorative stitches. <laughs> all right, now let's talk about the bells and whistles. Um, this is all the fancy stuff, which are useful to have and which are absolutely unnecessary in your guys' opinion. Like, I think a start-stop button is absolutely unnecessary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just I mean, I pedal. really like an, a thread cutter. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that's on my list. Yeah. yeah. I do like a thread cutter. I really like being able to move my needle. Like I move my needle oh, left and right yes. a ton. Mm-hmm. I So I feel like, um, and my old machine did not have that. And I feel like for me, that's a must have just because of the way that I sew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I had one a half a second ago and I've totally lost it. Somebody else talk. Um, (laughs) I'm a big fan of needle up down like Mm -hmm. having it stop in the fabric or above the fabric Um, especially if you're I don't know I find that um, is helpful for like quilting projects if you're or really any anything where you're going to do a corner having that needle automatically Mm -hmm. stop in the fabric is really nice Um, I, I don't tend to toggle. I guess I'm, I usually stay with needle down, but um, mm-hmm. I just think it's a 
it is a nice feature. I I did hear what you were saying, Kate, about the mechanical one stopping where you want it to. Mm-hmm. And I, I do feel yeah. like um, that is how I learned to sew. And I, I probably prefer that. But this is it's a pretty handy thing. No, and there's there are some moments when I am really glad to have that option. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the thing that I was uh, thinking about earlier and now remember is I do like a needle threader of some kind. Um, yeah. I mean, I might not always use it, but I like having the option if I'm tired and cranky or if the needle's giving me issues. Like if I sat there <laughs> and tried like six times to get the thread through there and it's yeah. just not going, I do like to have the option, even if it's, um, you know, not the super fancy one, but a more manual pull it down, pull the thread across yeah. one. It's nice to have that option to just have that little cheat if you need it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I was going to say a, a big... Uh... A big bell and whistle is like the embroidery capabilities. <laughs> that's a good, <laughs> oh, yeah. and that's like a yeah, whole other, I yeah. Th- I think that the embroidery capability is probably not something a new sewer wants I, to pick up yeah. because it adds a significant price to a machine. And usually um, getting to one that will both sew and embroider, that that's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> much more than a newbie wants to pay, but it is a really neat capability. Yeah. Uh, that is for sure. Um, I also, I prefer to have a lever to raise and lower my pressure foot. Yes. Pressure and a button. Foot. Yeah. I prefer, I f- prefer yeah. a level, lever to a button. If I have one that has both, I can live with that, but I do get a little frustrated when I'm working on a machine that only has the button. I, I would totally agree yep. with that. I like a, a, a lever as well. And that is probably a function oh. of us all having learned on machines with levers. Probably yeah, totally. if you learn on one with yeah. a button, you think the yeah. lever's stupid. Um, exactly. But Which I me. really, um, I need, like I, my, this one doesn't have it, but it's like kind of the one thing that I wish that it had. I like a backstitch lever. Oh, I don't yes. like a backstitch button. And I don't mm. like it. I know you can turn it on and off, but I don't like an automatic back. St- I don't know. Like it just gets too. I like a. I like a lever, like the mm-hmm. one that you like push down, or yeah. like a. I don't know. I don't like a back stitch button, but that's just. I can. I prefer a lever. Lever. I. I can live with a button. My only major issue is, um, I've been known to work on machines before where you press the button, and it will back stitch until you press it again. And uh, I want yeah. a button Ugh. that will only stitch backwards while it is depressed. And then once I let go of it, it will start stitching forward again. So Me that's, that's another one of my pet peeves <laughs> right there. Yeah. That is what I, I need out of life. You hold it for a little. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Uh-huh. Agreed. Yeah. And it is nice to have the, the – there's a, a lock stitch button that a lot of newer machines have that instead of stitching back we'll just stitch several times in one place and kind of tie the the Mm -hmm. stuff off there um i think that's fine to have but i would not call it a must-have um same with an automatic thread cutter um it can be really nice but i don't think it i don't think it's strictly necessary i think you can live life without it as a beginner Mm-hmm. So the other um, the other thing that really I was thinking about new machines and your first machine. And one of the things that kind of came to me was a story, if you don't mind me telling you a story. Um, when I was working at the th- uh, in a theater in our costume shop, we uh, needed a, a machine that would travel because we had a show that was going to travel and the dresser needed to take mm. a machine along just in case something happened and there needed to be an emergency repair. And because it wasn't anything that we were planning to use um, with any regularity, um, our costume shop manager went over to, I think, Walmart and bought a uh, cheap machine. It was The brand was Shark. Um, I've never heard of them making sewing machines before since, Um, but that's what it was. And it worked just fine for that purpose. But a few, uh, like a year later, we hired a bunch of new people and we had more people in our shop than we had machines, which is not a great way to run a costume shop. And so one of the solutions was to pull out that machine 
and use it for our costume construction. And this was not really a great decision because we were literally sewing eight hours a day and that machine was not designed to sew for eight hours a day. That machine was probably designed to sew 16 hours before it was thrown away and, and, and upgraded to a new one. Um, and it used to break down like all the time we would get, you'd get to 10 o'clock in the morning and it would start making weird clunking sounds and stuff. So one of the things that you should think about, in my opinion, when you are, um, buying a first machine is how much sewing you plan to do. If you plan Mm -hmm. on, you know, taking full weekends to work on stuff, you might want to think about investing a little bit more money on a little bit higher quality machine, simply because cheap machines are not designed to really take that kind of use. Um, So I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Or is this just me lecturing into the void? No, I, I agree. I mean, I think that, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's hard for me because I, I know the price range for sewing machines out mm-hmm. there. Oh, and I yeah. think in, if you're, if you, when you just come into this hobby, you know, even those lower end machines can feel like a lot of money can feel like a big yeah, investment. Totally. But I think if, if you, uh, like I said, like if you know going in what you want to get out of it, if you're going to get a machine, but you're also going to invest in some classes or you're going to take some online yeah. classes or you've got somebody mm-hmm. you're going to work with, then, you know, you're, you've already put the wheels in motion to make a bigger, to make a bigger commitment and a, potentially a bigger investment if you can make it work. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I think definitely, go for, go for the best machine you can get. Um, don't be distracted by the bells and whistles that yeah. y- you don't mm-hmm. necessarily need. Um, and yeah. And, and go in with some ideas about, about how much you want to do and yeah. how often. And um, cause I can also see, you know, maybe spending a little bit more money might be, might serve as a little bit of mo- motivation exactly. to kind of get mm-hmm. into it and stick with it and do some of those other things to kind of help your learning. Um, but so, yeah, that's, that's probably where I would land. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My, my, I actually comparing this to uh, what I'm doing right now is, so I started golfing and I'm loving, it. I've been a couple of <laughs> times, went to the driving range last week and, and I would just, um, like rent uh, clubs. And now I want to, I'm getting my own clubs, but I, do I, do I want to get the cheapest? But I know cause mm-hmm. golf clubs can range. Um, but obviously, uh, my, I, obviously I picked the one with the greenest bag, <laughs> <It's like laughs> mm-hmm. but I didn't want to go the cheapest. I went just kind of up from the cheapest because mm-hmm. my thing is I don't want like really crappy clubs to make it frustrating for me to get better at golf, right? So I think that that's the same thing as sewing. If you get like the the lowest end of the machine, like it just it might make sewing more frustrating because certain mm-hmm. things can keep happening with. So that's kind of what I yeah. So I I think the idea to just like get the best that you can afford, so it's more enjoyable and well, like Amanda said, more motivation. So. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's like you're you're not like you should be thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, you you, there are there are not great cheap machines and there are really awesome, super expensive machines. But you're also like you're kind of paying for your experience. You know, if you get that, you know, you know, super cheap machine again, nothing wrong with that. But you're going to think that sewing is awful and such a pain and you know, it's, it's going to be all. all about the machine rather than the enjoyment that you get out of mm-hmm. finishing something and the process mm-hmm. and all of the things that people actually love about sewing. It's going to be yeah. like figuring out a clunky machine. And again, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I think yeah. I think if you are if you start with a machine and you are just really hating sewing, then like think about the machine itself, you know, right. blame the machine. Don't blame you know, the hobby <laughs> blame the itself <laughs> because I think that people don't think about that. You know, it's like, Oh, it's a, it's a sewing machine. It's such a straight. Right. Um, so it's going to work if you're for always, me. If you're always fighting it, 
then you're not learning, you're not enjoying what you're doing. You're just sitting yeah. here being angry at your machine because it's not doing what you want it to do. So on that note, um, I, I think I'm going to uh, put myself out here a little bit and say, um, I think that if you're looking for a brand that you can trust on the lower on the lower end, I think you personally, I re would recommend Singer. They've been doing this a long time. They've got a great reputation. Um, um, I found Brother um, has been very reliable for me. Um, and they, they last a long time and, and they're kind of workhorses. I like brother machines a lot. And, uh, Kenmore, Kenmore, they, they make pretty good machines. Um, my surger's mm -hmm. a Kenmore, um, Mark's machine is a Kenmore and, uh, it, it's 20 years old and it runs like butter. And sometimes I want to use it instead of my machine because I, it's so smooth <laughs> even now. Um, and those are usually not as expensive as some of the, uh, brands that really go high end. Um, so, and, and they're pretty reliable. Um, do you guys have any, anything that you want to recommend as, as good starter brands? You know, I am not very loyal when it comes to brands. I'm kind of like that with cars. Like I yeah. jump around and I would you know, kind I just of just three, say, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. But I, I just, I, I feel like I'm usually like, instead of looking at brands, I'm looking at how far can my money get me in terms right. of a decent machine. Right. Um, but, but, but don't do shark, you guys. Shark doesn't make very good machines. I've never even heard of that. I don't. Yeah. Don't they yeah. make vacuum? Is that that same I, shark I think they brand? do probably also make <laughs> vacuums, but I mean, so does brother. Um, oh, but, that's true. <laughs> but um, I, I just, I'm, I'm going to say for the record, um, that was not a, a, a good machine and, and not really a very good investment. Um, so, yeah. Meg, mm -hmm. did you have any and recommendations I you have, want to make? Um, yeah, I started with the brother. I thought that was a really good intro machine. And then I got a Janome. Uh, that was my second uh, upgrade. And that one really, like, it didn't have to, yeah, to all the bells and whistles, just a couple knobs. I think it was the, the Soist, one of the Soist line ones. And my parents went to, like, um, like a, they got it for me at a, what are they called? <laughs> like an expo, like one of those... Yeah, like an exposed. expo. Yeah, I know. I, I, all those things are just so far gone, right? And you can't think know, of like true. having a big expo and Th something that word that don't just happen anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so she actually guided my parents, and they said that you know she's been sewing for a little bit. She had this machine, but we want to get her something that would. So the the lady talked her through um, at uh, that booth that specific machine and it did like my uh I, alicia has it julian's sister uh to this day and it's been still works works really good so that's a good kind of step up machine um mm -hmm. for sure i was super happy with it but right now i have i basically have one of everything now and i'm not I know. really yeah like <laughs> yeah. me too me too well, i can only yeah, ex yeah i have also wor i've worked with a wide range of different kinds of machines and um, they all have things that speak well for them and things yeah. that I don't like as much about them. Um, exactly. I also, um, my, when I was in the costume shop, our good machines that were not giving us constant problems were Janome's. And I want to say, I have no idea what the model is anymore, but they were, um, they were sort of mid-level computerized. They were like early computerized where okay. they were not nearly as fancy as the computerized ones you have now because they were purchased in the early 2000s. But uh, but they were good. They were workhorses. I think we had to send one out to be serviced once in three years. They they just kept sewing. And, uh, and I've got a real soft spot for Janome actually because I liked those machines so much. Uh -huh. And speaking of Janome. Oh, no, go ahead. I was actually. I, let me just cut in very quickly. I would. I would also throw Baby Lock in that um, oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. And Baby Lock actually say. has. They have a um, a beginner series. I think that is just oh, yes. a really great starting place for people. You know, you can really, you know, go by features, go by what you want, um, and get a decent machine. Um, so I really, I totally agree with you, Kate. I feel like. Um, most of those major brands, they've got some good entry level machine options for you. I think th if you get into it, there'll be things that you like, you'll discover things that you don't like. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. but I, I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of, a lot mm -hmm. of entry points. 
Yeah. So, and I'll just say but, one last thing too. <laughs> Having like a really fancy machine now, it's real be really hard to sew on anything else. Like uh, totally. Like the like those the designer ones, like the designer brilliance. Like it can literally do everything. And it's I right. think it would be if you can't like if you you know, if you can, like I I love I love mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I will say too, that having worked with most, most of the major brands in the past, you know, couple of years while I've been at this job, um, I've found things to like about all of them, but it is the baby lock destiny I brought home. So, uh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and eventually you're going to want to have like five machines anyway. So yeah, right. It's hard right. to just have one. Totally. Really. <laughs> and yeah, even when you upgrade, you're going to want to keep your original one and oh, go yeah. back and forth and use it for top stitching. Or It's you not know, the so. when one mm-hmm. comes in, one goes out. It's what totally. they keep coming in. <laughs> yes, well, exactly. Because you have, yeah. I yeah, I, well, and, I think I think if anyone's been counting, I have talked about uh, three sewing machines that are in my house right now, plus a serger. Um, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think makes totally that even normal. more. Yeah, yeah, I have a lot of machines. And also, if you have, like, a friend, like, just considering um, there are places that you can just rent by the hour, just sewing space. I know that in Toronto there's some places like that. Uh, so you can actually, like, rent uh, their sewing open hours that you can just – I know I'm not sure about – that right now in this current uh, environment, but right. businesses like that where you do get the satisfaction of just sewing, it's not like a cut, you're just kind of free to experiment and use a machine. Mm-hmm. Or if you have like a group of like maybe three, three friends or even two that want to go in on a machine together and kind of you rotate it when gets this idea. month, one next month, mm-hmm. um, I could see that st- scenario working out as well. Uh, just so if you just some little tips. Well, and, and also keep in mind that you can always go to a dealership and they will generally oh, yeah. have floor models that you get to play around with. So, or expos. So if you're like, well, I've been looking at, you know, this machine by this manufacturer and I don't know if I'm going to like this feature, you can usually go in and try it out and see how that goes. Yeah. So, all right, let's take a quick break and then we're going to yeah. come back and have a conversation with G- Regina from Janome. Yeah. Well, we've just been discussing beginner sewing machines and kind of really good things to consider if you are just getting started. But there also comes a point in a sewist's creative journey when they're ready to make an upgrade to the next step. And today I'm really excited to welcome Regina Carlavaro to the show. Regina is Director of Education and Product Planning for Genome America, and she is going to talk to us a little bit about when it's time to upgrade, what to look for, and really um, how you should approach taking a next step with a sewing machine. We are so excited to have you, Regina. Thank you for having me here. I am just uh, thrilled to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about your history with sewing and a little bit about what you do, the work you do with Janome? So um, my sewing career began at seven. Um, Somebody gave my mom a bag of hand-me-downs and there was a pair of shorts that I wanted, but the whole inseam crotch was ripped out. I hate that word. But um, (laughs) I I hand sewed it and I went outside and I played for 20 minutes and I ripped it out, was embarrassed, ran back home. And my mom was like, you know what, let me show you how to sew this on the sewing machine. And um, she got out her uh, her old Kenmore. I, I guess it was new at that time. And um, she showed me how the sewing machine sewed up that seam so quickly with such perfect little stitches. And I looked at her at the age of seven and I said, why would anybody ever want to hand sew when you have this? <sighs> yes. Right. And yeah. And I've never looked back. And that began my love affair. And um, so... I had amazing uh, a home ec teacher, Miss Kimbrough in Prescott Valley, Arizona. This is a shout out for you. Um, she uh, really um, took me under her wing and uh, brought her own serger from her home to teach me how to use that. She got me my first job at a five and dime store where they had a fabric department because I couldn't afford to keep making projects and buying them with my babysitting money. So... Mm-hmm. I got this wonderful gift of going into a fabric store and being able to pick out any pattern, any fabric, any notion that I wanted, oh, and I could make it. And wow. then they hung it up for the three dream. months, what? and I got to keep it. And ah. 
Yeah, it was it was such an amazing, and I think probably some of the best sewing I've ever done in my life, to be quite honest. Um, anyway, so from there, um, I started working in uh, the fabrics in the in the sewing industry, and uh, moved into sewing machines from the fabric part of the, the industry. And found that I just had a knack for it. I'm a me- mechanically minded person. I'm probably a better person with actual sewing machines than I am in sewing now. Um, but my career has taken me from managing a sewing machine store that sold five different brands to eventually um, being hired by Janome as an educator in 1999. Um, and from that uh, journey, it was I was an educator for four months. And uh, one of the vice presidents in the company loved that I had knowledge of other brands and so they invited me to move from Arizona to Mawa, New Jersey, uh, to become a merchandising supervisor. And so from that point, I've evolved into uh, education, uh, working with our customer service, our tech support, uh, our marketing department, and just helping to educate people about sewing and how wonderful it is and why they all everybody needs to sew. Oh, man, I love that. <laughs> do you with all of that, do you still get time to sew in your in your free time? Since unfortunately, COVID-19, um, mm-hmm. it, the silver lining has been that I've been working from home mm-hmm. and I have been knocking out some sewing. I've I'm addicted to making bags right now. And oh, I've been, nice. I, I just so you know, I'm thinking I'm thinking ahead. I already made a travel bag that's going to go in my suitcase and a crossbody bag that I can wear to shows. Uh, so I'm already planning ahead so that when uh, this is over, I'll have bags ready to travel and go. That is so amazing. Now, kind of leading into some questions with I know some bag sewing, some um, kind of beginner machines might not be able to handle you know those thicker fabrics. So when when is the time to upgrade? Let's say you're a beginner sewist, you started out, but you you keep you fall in love with it like we all do, and you want a little bit more more power and features. Like when do you know when it's time? That's uh, definitely. Um, a really good question because you do come to a point in your sewing career where you realize that your machine is not able to meet your needs. Uh Um, And and that's going to happen. Uh, uh, Just like, you know, cars, you start off with a very basic car. And as you get older, you move up through cars because uh, you want more features that are, you know, make your driving faster, easier, whatever, backup cameras. So you don't, you know, bump into things. Um, If you're finding that your next project, you're getting more frustrated then you are enjoying the sewing, that right there is your clear indicator because your sewing machine should just be an extension of your creativity. It should just Mm -hmm. be able to, you should be able to sit down at the machine. You should be able to put what your project is underneath of it and it should sew it. And if it's um, hesitating, it doesn't have the strength, then that's definitely a time to say, you know what, it's time to upgrade and I need something that's a little more heavy duty and maybe has um, the, the, the proper feet you know, could be something as simple Mm. as that, that the accessories aren't correct for your needs. You know, I think that's really true. I think that frustration is a key factor. I kind of like, I I think you shouldn't even have to think about your sewing machine. If you're, if your sewing machine is kind of getting in the way and you have to constantly think about what your sewing machine can and can't do. um, And if it's really kind of getting in the way of you um, being able to yeah, enjoy your sewing time. I feel like that's that's a really key indicator. I think that's a great point. I, I see it with my husband. Uh, as soon as he gets a power drill, for instance, a, a mm. battery power drill, and, and if it doesn't have the torque to uh, be able to screw the screws mm-hmm. into a certain thing, he's like, ah, this, I need an upgrade. I need a better cordless screwdriver. So, you know, mm-hmm. um, even though we get very personally attached to our sewing machines, at the end of the day, they are a tool. They are an appliance. Yeah. And you, know, you need to have one that meets your needs. <laughs> At first, I thought you were you were going to talk about upgrading the husband. <laughs> <laughs> I know I kind of did too. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> no, well, if I they know. don't let you buy a new machine, yes, then, then maybe if- you should think about it. <laughs> then you know. Yes, then you know. Oh. Well, thinking about um, features, Regina, I'm interested to hear if you have kind of three must-have features in mind when thinking about a new sewing machine. But also, um, I'm interested to hear if there are any cool new technology um, 
things that you can tell us about that are either in the works with Janome or just some cool things that have come on the marketplace recently that you've seen really kind of had an impact for people? I think that's a really good question because it's very easy to get caught up in bells and whistles and newfangled devices and um, say, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And what could I do with that? But I think at the end of the day, you really need to look at what you do, um, what you hope to do um, and think, how is that going to affect my everyday applications? Is that a feature that I'm really going to use every day or even once a week? Uh, You would need to look at... um, a machine that's going to stay up to the demand of what you are asking it to do. So I always say, you know, before you look on the outside of the machine, before you start looking at, at all those bells and, bells and whistles, the first thing you need to do is ask, what's it made of inside? Hmm. Is it a heavy duty machine? Is it metal parts? Is it uh, our metal frame? Um, is it going to be able to stand up to the demands and the longevity and the life of, of what I want to do. Is it going to be able to stand up to me sewing for eight hours straight because mm-hmm. I have a weekend free and I'm going to a retreat and mm-hmm. I'm going to have that machine running for a long time. Right. Uh, so, you know, get to the basics first before you expand to, you know, these must have features. You want a machine that's going to last you and maybe someday even be something you, you know, have your child sit down at and you teach them to sew on something you can hand down. Yeah. Um, you know, it, in a world of planned obsolescence, um, it's it's very comforting to me that uh, many sewing machine companies, they don't do that. They still have such pride in creating um, a product that's going to last for a long time. So that's where I start. Get a machine that has um, that longevity and that strength to it. Um, but getting into features, um, my favorite features um, are upper feed. Machines that give you the ability to change out upper feed, uh, presser feet, um, so that whenever you're doing different applications, you're not um, stopped by not being able to feed your fabric through evenly, whether it's quilting, right? So, you know, we've all quilted uh, layers of fabric, batting, and you hate it whenever the top of your fabric starts buckling or it's not feeding evenly with the bottom layer. So having upper feed to me is crucial. So a lot of machines, most machines have upper feed uh, or a a foot that you can plug in that gives you, you know, a walking foot or an even feed foot. So what I really, really love about Janome is that we've come out with this whole AccuFeed Flex system. So it's an upper feed system, but it doesn't ride on your needle bar. It actually is integrated into the upper main shaft of the machine. So it means I can actually adjust the amount of feed on the upper part of the machine as well as the lower part, my feed dogs. So whether I'm sewing uh, quilts, if I'm sewing velvet to satin, um, no matter what substrate, I can adjust that upper feed to make sure that my uh, top fabric ends at the end at the same rate as the bottom fabric. So that's one uh, feature that I really love, AccuFeed Flex, um, because it's not only great for walking feet, uh, for I'm sorry, for quilting, it's amazing for, like I said, I've been on a bag run. I've been making bags. So putting, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've been putting a lot of zippers into very thick substrates. Um, yeah. I'm addicted to uh, Jessica Vandenberg, so many creations. She makes the best bag patterns. So a lot of cork, a lot of layers. Mm-hmm. So having a narrow upper feed zipper foot is amazing. Amazing. (laughs) You put these zippers in and, you know, I hate the phrase like butter, but it's like butter. It just (laughs) goes right through, (laughs) needle down, feeds everything at the right uh, speed and rate. And you just end up with this perfectly inserted zipper with no, again, no frustration. You know, not, you're not fighting your machine. So that I think is um, one of those features that I look at and say, wow, that's really, really cool, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to use that. You know, if not daily, I'm going to use that weekly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's one of my favorite um, must-have features. Uh, another one is, and this is something, it's kind of one of those things where um, if you don't know about it, you don't know to ask for it. Uh, so when I was, you know, trading in my car, I didn't realize, like I said earlier about a backup camera, I didn't know that that was so important. And now I can't imagine living without it. Same. 
right? <laughs> yeah, I, most definitely. I, I had a, a few dings in my uh, back bumper on my Honda minivan before I got one. <laughs> right, mm-hmm. me too. Um, so I, you know, didn't really understand why um, having a machine that had um, auto foot lift was important. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, it's you hear this feature and you're like, oh, yeah, 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 that machine has that. But what does that really mean? Um, so being able to sew on a machine that at the end of your seam automatically lifts the foot, locks off the thread and comes up, cuts the thread, needle comes up. And all you have to do is remove your machine, your fabric from the machine and just turn over to your ironing board and iron mm. is amazing. I love that feature. Um, and there's been times when I went back to a machine now that doesn't have that. Oh, and yeah. I've been chain piecing and I literally grabbed my chain of thre- fabric and I've almost pulled the machine off of the cabinet because it's still <laughs> attached. So I love uh, the ability to have that feature of, of auto foot lift because that also lends itself to auto pivoting, which is amazing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When you're, when you're applicating, um, when you're doing any kind of uh, uh, decorative stitching where you have to pivot on something. Um, so those, those are my favorite, I think, features uh, that I really, really love uh, when you're looking for a machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, especially with the auto uh, lift, I have a machine that does that. And for me, it's like at the start of the seam because I have everything. I if, if there's this little seam, all my fingers are holding everything in place. And if I have to remove one of my hands to uh, like manually lower down that foot, it everything shifts. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Especially, I would have never. Yeah. Sorry, especially when we're told don't don't wear use pins on the machine, right? So we're like, oh, right, yeah, right. Yeah. You need a you third know, hand. Was, I was thinking about when you were talking too about, you know, thinking about the longevity of a machine. Um, when I chose to upgrade um, many years ago, I, you know, I was sewing, I was doing a lot of quilting and the so the machine that I was looking for and thinking about an upgrade was one that had features that were kind of better for quilting. And now I find myself... Um, doing a bit more garment sewing, a lot more garment sewing, actually. So I think that's, um, I mean, it's hard to anticipate where your creativity is going to take you. But I think um, really considering kind of like what your what your main sewing tasks are and then and and trying to anticipate as best you can, um, you know, where where you'll where you'll be in a few years and making sure that, you know, that those um, features will still be a good fit with your interests and your, you know, your wants and needs. I think it's also crucial uh, when you're, when you're ready to upgrade, whether you bought your first machine online or you bought it on at a yard sale. um, I think it's really crucial to also look at where you're going to get support for that machine Mm -hmm. after you buy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I always recommend, you know, if you buy your first machine online, you know, it's, it's definitely convenient. De- definitely during, you know, COVID-19, it was a lifesaver for so many people to be able to buy a machine online. Definitely. Uh, so, right. Since they're making masks. And so my, my hope is that all those people who have bought that machine for masks, uh, decide, I don't want to stop here. There's, there's so many other things now that I can do with these machines. And I hope that eventually, that they'll look to upgrading uh, to, so what they can make garments or they want something heavy duty so they can make those bags or they want all those really great quilting features uh, that they'll go to a dealer so that they can sit down at the machines there and actually try them before they buy them. I think that's crucial. Uh, you want to go to a place that you're going to have support. They're going to be able to help you with it, answer questions. Uh, there are times uh, when we come out with new machines that we literally receive them in our office and we get no training on them. We have to Mm. train ourselves on the machines. So there's been times when we get these new machines and we don't know about features being even in them. And later on we go through a spec list and we're like, Oh, what's that? And then we have, we explore it and we're like, Oh my goodness, this is amazing. So as a consumer, you know, you run into the same thing. You might be looking at all these machines and it might be a little overwhelming because there's so many features. So it's so crucial to have that dealer to answer those questions, give you lessons on the machine and really help you get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. 
And speaking about servicing machines, do like if you upgrade, like do expensive machines and upgraded machines need to be serviced more often or in a different way than beginner ones? Like how would you service differently one with computerized features? Is that different from can you service that at home? Like what's kind of the protocol for for that? It's exactly the same. Uh, as long oh, as okay. <laughs> it is, it is. As long as you are uh, not, you know, building the abominable snowman underneath your needle plate with lint, and <laughs> you take it out after, you know, sewing for, you know, if you even if you sew for like say a couple days straight, I I get my needle plate out, I clean up my bobbin area, oh. um, I get everything out of there because lint is what's uh, most machines today. A lot of machines have what is called uh, oil impregnated parts. Oh. And lint sucks the oil out of your machine. Mm. So uh. if you go in, clean out your needle bar area, if uh, you use a, 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 like a little small vacuum cleaner tip, you can suck things out. Never use canned air. Uh, it's very easy to want to do that and blow everything out, but it literally, it actually blows lint into the machine. Also, it um, adds moisture into the machine and you don't want that because oh. that could create rust um, inside of your machine. So Clean it out regularly, uh, and then that most, take it to your dealer once a year. Dealers are going to be more than happy to tell you how to keep your machine maintenance properly be in between visits to them. They don't want you in every week. They, 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 <laughs> you know, they're busy. They're busy people. Yeah. They're, you know, they're small business owners. So you know, ask them that. Is, you know, is it okay to do that basic maintenance on my machine? And where, if, if I can oil it, where should I oil it? Yeah. And if, and if you're if they can't give you a straight answer, then contact the manufacturer of your machine. Our customer relations department, for instance, they'd be more than happy to send you a video link on where to, you know, where you would do that maintenance on your machine and where to oil. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna need to have you on speed dial and <laughs> call you I know. in. And I know. <laughs> this conversation is making me feel very guilty about the I status know. of my machines at the, the moment. Same. <laughs> oh, it is so tempting to use that canned air, though. I oh, love it yes. is, and oh, I've yeah. been guilty of it. I've oh, been guilty, yeah. and then you know somebody. <laughs> taught me different. I'm like, oh my goodness. It's a, yeah. And my Janome still sewed for a long, long time. So, you know, <laughs> hey. There you go. Well, we've been talking um, quite a bit about sewing machines, but I, I feel like we, our audience is very heavily um, into garment sewing. And I think if you, you know, as you're, as you're kind of getting into garment sewing, I think at some point you are going to ask yourself if a serger is something that you need. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, Regina, I'd love to hear your thoughts about kind of when do you think it makes sense to add a serger um, to your arsenal? And mm -hmm. um, and what are you, what's your take on starting with a beginner machine there? Any reasons to think about leveling up a little bit um, as you get started? What are your thoughts? You should uh, add a serger to your sewing room yesterday. <laughs> yes. I have to say I agree. <laughs> yes, I agree. Totally. Uh, I, I, um, I absolutely adore sergers just because I'm a fast sewer. So they, mm -hmm. they sew faster than a sewing machine. Uh, I grew up where you had to use pinking shears on all your seams. <laughs> yep. I, and I never found a good pair. Never found a good pair that didn't want to eat your fabric. Uh, so I love, I love the beauty of a serge seam. Uh, I love the durability of it. Uh, I love the speed. I really would like, you know, everyone to get one um, and learn the beauty of it and how it makes your sewing better. But there are those people who are afraid of them. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's, again, where I say get a serger. And no matter what level you get, make sure you get it from a dealer. So that way you can get those lessons and they can help you and take away the frustration level. Because if you get that hand-holding help and they show you how to thread it, the cheating ways to unthread and change thread and all those different things, then the fear factor goes away. And then you can just enjoy using it for what it's meant uh, to do and what the intent of that machine is. That being said, if you have the ability to buy a machine that has air threading, mm -hmm. then don't, don't stop. Just go directly to go <laughs> <laughs> and buy a machine with air threading. Well, thank you so much, Regina, for joining us. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. That was super fun. I'm glad I could join you. It was lovely speaking with you ladies.
That was really interesting. I really like what she had to say about if you're not having fun, it's probably time to upgrade. <laughs> totally. That's I mean, really kind of what we were saying in the last segment. Exactly. Too. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Sewing should be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely should be fun. And uh, yeah, when it's time to upgrade, that's always an exciting time when you get to go look and start thinking about those decorative stitches yeah. you might actually use and the bells yeah. and whistles you don't need. And yeah, upgrading is fun. fun upgrading times. is fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So speaking of sewing i was gonna say speaking of like i don't know oh geez let's talk about our sojo with our upgraded machines <laughs> uh, or our same machine we started out with in my case that's true yeah i know sometimes i hop around different if i'm just feeling like Me too. this one hasn't gotten some love lately i'll sew something just just so it knows that i still think about it <laughs> oh geez i still love you machine um, I still love you. You because some yeah, you find little quirks of each one, uh, mm-hmm. and you like doing certain ones on certain things. So yeah, so we're talk about our sewing mojo. It's our sojo. It's giving us our sewing mojo. I just said those words a million times. So why don't <laughs> Amanda? Why don't you kick us off? <laughs> All right. Well, um, I. Have I was like as I mentioned, I've been working on a last minute um, Father's Day gift, and that is to make my husband another pair of Fremantle pants, um, which is a pattern by LB Textiles. And I don't know, I think what happened was I finally figured out that I have enough elastic waist pants for like three people. And so now (laughs) I'm just gonna make my husband a bazillion elastic waist pants. And it's um because I just love making them so much, but it is kind of awesome. Like I, I think I've just been inspired. He wears his pants that I've made him. I'm, I've now made him four pairs and I just ordered some fabric for a few more. He wears them every day. He, oh, and he is yeah. like such a grateful recipient. And I just like, I know how comfortable and awesome, like, especially like linen elastic waist pants mm-hmm. are. And now mm-hmm. to make those for him and he is definitely comfortable and, um, and, you know, proud to rock some, his wife maids. Um, (laughs) so I've just been kind of on a, on a making pants for him kick. So, um, and kind of loving it. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How are you, Kate? Oh, well, I have been kind of semi obsessed with my up in arms tops that I have, um, that's a Sonia's pattern. I have a couple of them that I've made and apparently they're what I want to wear right now. Um, I'm always mad because when they're both dirty, which they are right now. Um, wow. and so I think maybe it's time to make a few more of those. So, um, I've, I'm kind of looking up at my stash to figure out what I have the right amount for. I know we talked about, um, I have some striped fabric. We talked about doing that with when we were, um, speculating about fabrics, a few probably months ago now, years ago. I don't know. I can't remember anymore. Yeah. Um, and I've also got that, uh, that linen I got in, um, Austria that I might have enough of. We'll have to see. So I think, I I think I'm going to head for some up in arms tops pretty quick. Nice. Mm -hmm. I love that pattern. How about you, Meg? Well, I've been working on, um, yeah, lots of sewing for other people right now. I'm have a deal with my the hair salon that I go to, I'm making them new like like hairdressing robes in exchange for like hair services. So I'm working on some of those. And then Julian now wants a summer onesie because I just got around to making him a onesie, and then he goes, "Now it's too hot out. I want one with like short sleeve, like a so I'm like uh, like a romper." He's like, "Yeah," and so I need to make him one of those. <laughs> so these will be shorts, right? Short yes. sleeves and shorts. That's yes, amazing. I think yeah. you should make him make it though. I know. Well, he he may he did all the surgery. Right. Mm-hmm. He loves the surger in the last one. So I think yeah, I'm gonna utilize him more for sure. So yeah, you could do a nice um, a nice like cotton uh, knit. That would be super yeah. comfy. Yeah, that's what we were thinking. Yeah. Cool. So fun summer onesie. Yeah. Summer onesie. <laughs> I love that. Mm-hmm. Well, let's hop into sew and tell. We actually didn't ask a sew and tell question in the last episode, so we don't have any answers to read. And we'll just start fresh with this episode um, with this question. 
what tips do you have for someone looking to buy a new sewing machine? Um, mm. Those that'll be really handy. I think that'll be a nice little yeah. resource for people. Yeah, because yeah, so. we all have our opinions, but let's hear your exactly. opinions too. And they don't have exactly. to be um, new sewing machines. Go ahead, or for for beginners, go ahead and tell us what we should look for if we're looking for our fourth sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always exactly. looking. It's so horrible. I know. <laughs> I'm always I know. looking. But yeah, let <laughs> us let us know um, your must haves at our um, sew and tell pod Instagram feed or email us. Drop a message on our show notes page and let us know what you think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that was super fun. I want a new sewing machine now. I know it was really interesting. <laughs> I want to go. I want to go pull the embroidery arm off my off my baby lock now and and stitch a little bit on that one. I feel like it hasn't gotten enough love lately. Yeah, is it just you set it up for embroidery most of the times? You don't. Yeah, it's uh, it's mostly s- set up for it's embroidery. Like set up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and I only I only pull it out if for some reason we need a second sewing machine, um, because Mark's is currently lent to my mother for teaching my niece to sew but she well not my niece my cousin um but she's not going to be doing that anytime soon because coronavirus yeah, yeah. Yep. so Always super fun chatting. episode yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. all right well everybody take care stay healthy and uh happy stitching yeah happy, happy stitching, stitching. For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at goldenpeakmedia.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer the sewandtell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening, and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Our consulting producer is Ron Doyle, and our executive producer is Jared Mayer. My daughter is locked in her bedroom. Oh, Oh, no. On purpose? On accident. Um... So I let me run upstairs real quick and then we can finish this segment. I'm so sorry, okay. y'all. No oh, worries. don't be sorry. <gasps> <Watch out. laughs>